The first thing that you'll be judged for is what? Or what did the word say? This world will be judged by what or in what? Righteousness. You can be judged for right conduct. But that righteousness has to come out as a source out of the Lord Jesus Christ because he is what? Our righteousness. He's been made unto us the righteousness of God. Jesus Christ in us is the righteousness of God. Now, where does this righteousness come through? Faith is a righteousness of God, which is by faith. No faith, no righteousness. What do you think, Abraham? Abraham believed God. Jesus hadn't even died and gone to the throne yet. Abraham believed God, and what did God put on his account? Righteousness. As prayer was going forth this morning, righteousness, righteousness, all right is, is right conduct. You got the Holy Ghost to reveal righteousness in you. When you receive Jesus as your Savior, all God did, he know you couldn't get nothing. So what he did, you said, by faith I received Jesus. So what the first thing he bestows on you? Righteousness. How do you receive it? You receive it by faith. From faith to faith. From faith that's given to you by God, and you're going to receive it from God by faith. You can't get nothing from God unless you operate in what? Faith. And that faith produces a pathway called righteousness. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Well, how do you seek God? Ain't but one way. Without faith, you can't please him. So the faith will bring forth the righteousness. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and you can't do that without faith. There in that righteousness is the promise of life which is now, the life which now is, and of the life which is to come. Therefore, faith is only for one thing salvation in its totality oh what we doing now this disciplines of life that's just a part of the journey so you need to learn let the holy spirit teach you let grace teach you you need to learn how to operate out of faith as a source you'll never be disappointed never be defeated you'll never fail because you've been made the righteousness of god in christ jesus see everything is to exalt the believer First of all, you got to have the life of Christ in you. You got to yield to that. That just don't drop out the sky. It just don't happen to you because you saying it. You have to live out of it where it becomes a reality. You have to experience the things of God. And I'm going to tell you something. It says demonstration of the spirit. The Holy Spirit being demonstrated to you now in you. He's doing the work. It's the ministry of the Holy Spirit, which is what? Not seen. I don't know what God doing in you, but I know he doing something in you. I believe that. You understand? When the people saw Jesus do wonders and miracles and signs, what he said, you ain't following me because of the miracles. You follow me because I fed you. Ain't that what he told them? Believing is a work of God. God did not leave us to ourselves. Thank God he did. Believing is a work of God. Okay? Well, Sister Lee, how is it a work of God? Whose faith is it? Whose love is it? All you have to do is become dependent upon him as a child on a father. Depend on him, I mean, for everything. You lose sight of your own self, things that you do. You got to lose sight of that. You got to lose sight of self-interest and get involved into the activities of the kingdom of heaven because it resides in you. Jesus Christ treats his body as a whole. But then when you come before him, you're going to be judged on individual merits. So you need to understand this. First of all, what is it that you purpose in your heart? Does God work in the head or the heart? He works in the heart. So everything is a purpose in your heart concerning things of God. What is it that you purpose to do? Only he knows that. Only he knows what you have, what you don't have. He knows everything about you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. We don't know that. Even when we pray for each other, we still don't know. All we do is what? Believe that what we pray is being carried out. I believe that. I don't have to see nothing because I trust Jesus. As a matter of fact, when it says confess Jesus as Lord, you know what that means? The Greek winning for that is Jehovah saves Jesus. So every time they were saying Jesus, the Jewish people were hearing Jehovah saved. Lord implies his deity. Confess Jesus as Lord. So now when you're praying for salvation for other people, I just believe Jesus is go save them. 
All this little, whatever they doing, that's their business. Jesus know how to get you saved. I wandered down this way and I lost my way, but he brought me home. <laughs> Even in the shadows of death. Yeah, uh-huh. You go praise him? Disasters, catastrophes, you go praise him? See, now that's maturity in Christ. Everything you see, you don't see nothing but Jesus. So you don't see no sorrow. You don't see this and that and, you know, and like I said, people get mad with you because you don't display none of that stuff. Hebrews 10, 23, it says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. When it comes to anything, you hold fast to your profession. What have you been professing? That's for anything. Lord, I thank you for the increase on my job. Lord, I thank you. But you're holding fast to what you professing. You don't go back and erase it with unbelief and doubt. It says to hold fast to it. Well, I don't see no So The word says, I'm in agreement with the word. It says, let us, let us who? Me, as far as I'm concerned, me, God, Holy Ghost, the word, and everybody that's in agreement. I'm going to hold fast to that. For he is faithful, that promise. God faithful. If you believe, all things are possible to him that believe. Then he said, and let us consider one another. To do what? To provoke unto love and to good works. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the man of some is. Now, it's amazing. If you're on vacation, out of time. I'm not against that. Like I said, we spend less time at church than any, any place. You spend less time at church than any place. I bet you when your job door open and you're supposed to be there, you there. But when the church doors open, well, yeah, you know. Mm. Okay. Are you work? How long it took you, Jackie? Three years? <laughs> it took her two years. She come here on a Friday. She come here Friday before she went to work. See, now, this is a deliberate commitment. Deliberate. Oh, you just want to float through like, well, you know. All right, okay. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exalting one another. Oh, I'm exalting y'all. I'm not fuss, I'm not mad with you because y'all grown. I ain't mad with nobody because Jesus Christ is the head of the church, not me. Okay? See, if you know what your job is, you don't take nothing personal. I know what my job is. It's to preach the word in season, out of season. Don't care how you look on your face. Don't care whether you turn your head up, nose down. Jesus Christ is a stumbling block and an offense to people who do not love the word of God. And so much the more as you see what the day approaching. You don't have a vision of him riding on a cloud. <laughs> As you see, as you see, do you have a vision of him coming back or you got a vision of something else? For if we sin willfully after that we have received by faith the knowledge of the truth, because you can't receive nothing from God unless it's by faith, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall divide the adversary. You don't want to put yourself in opposition to the Lord. But I find out this. If you have his spirit in you and you do act like an alley cat, you are going to heaven. The only thing that's in you to hell is rejection of Jesus Christ. But if you want to skate through life, well, I know when I die, I'm going to heaven. That is fine because he's going to give out rewards. You may be having to work. Ain't no maybe having to. You won't be ruling and reigning as a king. You may have to work. Okay. Hebrews. 11 chapter. We see where Hebrews 11 and 1 says, now faith is. We looked at some things the last time we met. We could also say now God is, now Jesus is, now the Holy Spirit is, and now the believer is. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The key to faith is found in verse 27, 11, 27. That last little part. That's the key to faith, as seeing him who is invisible. You see what it says? By faith, Moses forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured. How did Moses endure? As seeing him who is invisible. See, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. If you don't see Jesus, you got to see Jesus. Your focus, looking unto Jesus, 
Let us see Jesus. That's the element of faith. How do you see him? If you can't see him as the supplier of your needs, your needs are never getting met. Of course, God's mercy is always in play, but we want to grow up. You're grown anyway. You want to <laughs> you want to be a mature Christian. All right, Lord, what you need me to do? Not Lord, you know I got this need. It's unchanged. Lord, what you need me to do? Well, I already know mine's met. Now, what you need me to do? I'm not focused on what, what I don't have and need this. It's already met. What, what if it don't get met? So, must have something better. You just throw that stuff in the garbage can. You got one focus, one interest, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. You're living in a temporary home. You can see it, touch it, taste it, feel it. It's temporary and it's subject to change. Suppose God want to put you in another house. And you try to hold on to that little tent you got. Like I told you, baby, faith is intriguing. It is intoxicated. Cool. Yes, indeed. Because you don't know. But you know him. That's the main thing. So then I don't have no cares. And I can say whatever he tell me to say to whomever he tell me to say. See, now that's ministry by the spirit of the Lord. Well, what if they don't receive? Well, the Lord has said, no, don't say it. So I ain't going to say it. Okay. Then I got to read in this. So I said to myself, I said, by it, second verse 11 and 2, by it, speaking of faith, it said the elders obtained a good report. Okay, by faith, they obtained a good report. They couldn't see nothing, but they what? Heard a report. Somebody had to say something. So they believed what he said, and they received a good report. You got that? They obtained, they obtained a good report. Look at 11 and 39. And these all having obtained a good report through faith. What do you think the gospel is? The gospel is the good news. It's the good news. You brothers, oh, girl, they doing this and they doing this. This world is just going to hell. Well, I ain't going with it. I'm keeping my eyes on the good that God is. Mm -mm -mm. Taste and see that the Lord is good. And you can't do nothing apart from his goodness. He commands us to continue in his goodness. He's a good God, gracious God, loving God. And that's all you should see. Why are you going to see something else? And why are you going to listen to what your feelings telling you? And it ain't lining up with the word. Give yourself heartaches, headaches, all kind of aches. Predisposed to this world and this system. He fills my mouth with what kind of things? Good things. So that my youth is renewed as the eagle. Me and Jackie get through working out. I said, Lord, we just want to thank you. We offer our body up as a, by your mercies now, as a living sacrifice. We thank you, Lord. We got strong hearts. We thank you, Lord. Our lungs are strong. Our pancreas, our gallbladder, our small and large intestines. This is built into our workout. All abnormal fat deposits gone. <laughs> so then when I say the Lord fills my mouth with good things so that my youth is renewed as an eagle, I ain't lying. Ain't no lie in my mouth. But see, it's him who gets the glory. Him. So you make that a part of your exercise. Because exercise profited for a little while. But godliness is what? It's profitable in all things. In this life and in the one to come. Preach to the people on the TV and told them, if you've been praying in tongues, see, that wouldn't have happened to you. If you had an old Jesus, see, I had somebody to preach to. Why do you think that's happening to you? You sold for that. Look what kind of life you're living. I don't look at stuff that pierces my heart and make me feel sorry for somebody. I don't like that. I don't like nothing piercing my heart, nothing but the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't believe in sentiment. Oh, I feel so sorry. Uh-uh, no, don't come to me if you're looking for pity. I ain't got one thing to tell you, and that's what the words say. And you are grown. You can either take it or leave it. But I'm not going to be drawn into the way you feel or what you think. And it's against God's word. And most people can't swallow that. A lot of people left the church, they tell me, because of Sister Lee. Why? I ain't had but one thing. And that was the word. Pastor could smooth it out and stroke it. I couldn't. <laughs> they got too many people that's smoothing it out and stroking it. And Jesus is not in the stroking business. He's in the comforting business. And he comforts you through what? Scripture. If you cry, he'll cry with you. Because he said he's touched with all our infirmities. I don't want Jesus crying with me. I want Jesus in action, which means what? I can cry to him, but make sure I cry to him in what? Faith. You go to the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find help in time of need. You understand? Everything has a spiritual background to it. 
You don't want to be just hovering in the background. You want to come to the forefront with the background backing you up. Now, the Lord can use you, brother. The Lord can set you up and establish you the way he wants to for his purpose. You can't be scared. You got to lose everything. Everything where? In the heart. My mama don't even have a place in my heart. How can I minister to her if something happened to her and I got to go over here and, oh, mama, my dear, my dear, my. That ain't helping her. In the name of Jesus. Now, you can't have both of them. You can't have both of them in that. Well, which one you going to choose? I'm going to choose Jesus. So all this, you just don't know how I feel. And, oh, please. I done been there. You done been there too. We know how each other feel because we don't feel the same thing. But now we know better. For by it, faith, the elders obtained a good report. And these all have not obtained a good report through faith. They hadn't received the promise. Received not the promise. When you believe that you receive it, see, faith, that's faith. When you believe that you don't receive something out from God and the word, you don't believe that you receive it, you can't even see it. That's faith. You don't have to see it. Your belief becomes the substance of that. Your faith becomes the evidence of that it becomes the substance of that and that's God it's like saying God is the substance of things that I'm hoping for God is the evidence of things that I don't see instead of trying to take faith and program it in your head and all that's God Jesus is the author and the finisher of that faith it originates from him why don't you release it to him and let him finish it am I in faith no (laughs) am I believe no if your heart condemns you, what? God is greater than your heart. If you condemn yourself for that thing you allowed. Did I condemn myself for watching TV all that day? No, I said, thank you, Jesus. Give you the praise and honor that this stuff wasn't worth looking at. It's all right. I rested. So I was rest. You had a good sleep. Come here to church and know what day it was. Who cares? That's fine. That's external. See, that's why you hold on to Jesus. If you forget something, and you don't have to be old to forget, you can be young. How many of y'all been to the kitchen and went in there and forgot what you was going in there for? What did you do? Well, it'll come to me. Oh, I know. And then you go back. Why are you going to be, yeah, I'm just losing my mind. I can't remember nothing. Oh, now you done invite the devil in. <laughs> oh, we're going to lose our mind now, brother. I just can't remember nothing. Oh, now you ain't going to never remember. The Holy Ghost is my memory because I'm a new man. I ain't got to rely on no brain. Why? Because it's dead. It's dead anyway. It can't produce nothing. (laughs) What am I doing? I'm affirming the word of God in everything that I do. Okay, look at verse 3, 11 and 3. Through faith, look now, through faith. What is faith? The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is Jesus. Faith is God. Faith is the Holy Ghost. We understand now, if it's through faith, you go understand what you got to understand with your heart, not your head. Believing is a product of the heart, but believing is also a mode of thinking. As a man think it in his heart, what's the believing is done with the heart. So believing becomes a mode of thinking. What do you believe? I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. And this is the faith that overcome this world. This is the victory that overcome this world. Faith in Jesus. No, I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about what you believe about that. What you believe about See, I can see that. But nobody wants to talk about heaven. They want to put their focus on what's going on around here. What do I do? I want to talk about heaven. Those people are grown. That's their house. You understand what I'm saying? So when you get ready to talk about somebody, did God tell you something about them people? What did he say? How you judge it? He go manage it back to you. See, spiritual things. And they real. Through faith, we understand the worlds, the universe, the cosmos, were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Now, what is he talking about? Faith as a creative power of divine works. See, faith got so many definitions to it. Faith as a creative power of divine works. Well, where you see that? at? Okay, why are you saying that, John? You know you're sitting right here in the church. See, faith, faith elevates you. So why not operate in it? A divine power, a creative force. If it's not there, what God say he'll do? He'll make it for you. Because why? You believe in him for the impossible. 
Because grace is an unlimited resource. God is the God of impossibilities. That's the one you go to. <laughs> you go to him. <laughs> He's the God of the impossible. He's going to make it possible. How? Grace. Supernatural abundance of grace. See, if you're not expecting what that man looking on Peter, expecting to receive something. And Peter says, silver and gold have I not, but such as I have, give I unto do. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, rise and walk. Say, why are y'all looking at me? It's faith in this name that has given this man this perfect silence. So I use that for healing too. Oh, oh, in the name, faith in the name. If you go have faith in the name, you just can't be throwing that name over here and throwing it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. No, 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 no. Then when you really need it, you don't cry wolf for so long. <laughs> All right, look at verse 4. By faith now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Remember now, Jesus hadn't died and gone to the cross. The evidence of things not seen. By faith, Abel offered unto God. See, everything has to do with God in these faith situations. He offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testified. When you operate in faith, the Holy Spirit actually produces the faith in your heart out of them words on the pages. Or as you listening to me, the words that I speak, they are spirit in life because they are God's words. And the Holy Spirit rides on that word and he puts faith in your heart. For what purpose? The message is not coming to you just for you to hear me. The message is coming to you for you to act upon whatever is needful for you in your life concerning the message. This might be one or two little words you might need. Deliberate choice. Get with the Lord so I can purpose something in my heart. I have a goal. Who is your goal? Jesus is my goal. <laughs> Who is the object of my faith? Jesus is. Whatever it took Jesus to win me, I want to turn around and win him. Why? That I may be one with him and the Father. Now if my life is here with Christ in God, that makes me one with them already. So you want to be one with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. One, just one. Cannot tell the difference. God will testify to what you're doing. What you're doing in secret, what does he do? He rewards openly. Nobody knows but you and God, and he'll reward you openly. So God testifying of his gift, and by it, he being dead yet speaking. He's talking about a divine testimony of righteousness. Faith will testify for you. I'll tell you something else too. Let's go to John. John 8 and 28. Then said Jesus unto them, he was speaking to the Jews that are seeking to kill him. When you have lifted up the son of man, what does that mean? When you have lifted up the son of man, what are they talking about? Just think about it. Okay, when you lift up the name of Jesus or you lift Jesus up, you are ministering to him. He talking to the Jews who was going to kill him. And he told them, when you have lifted up the son of man, what that mean? That means they'll put him on the cross. When you have lifted up the son of man, he died at their hands. Then you shall know I'm he. Why? Because he go raise up from the dead. Some of you got to die to yourself so you can be raised up. You're going to have to let self go. They got some things you, you confront. It's a part of it. You just got to let it go. You got to die to self. If you try to find a part of your life, you're going to lose it. But if you lose that part of your life that you don't need, God going to raise you up. You can't have Jesus and still have the same self life. What self life? The way you were before you got saved. You can't have that. Because, see, some of us still have things in our heart. And the Lord know how to take them out. Just let him. That's all I'm saying. Let him. When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall you know that I am he. And that I do nothing of myself. He does nothing of himself. Now, over there in Corinthians, it tells us that God was in Christ doing the work. Well, who you think in you? In Christ dwells the whole Godhead bodily in Christ, but it's through his spirit. So you got the spirit of God working in you for what? To lift up the name of Jesus, to tell people about his death, burial, and his resurrection. 
And if they believe that, they can't be what? Saved. But as my father has taught me, I speak these things. Okay, now he's speaking. When Jesus speaks, his word is a quickening power. His word is spirit and they produce life. So he's speaking. Okay, now as he's speaking, faith is being imparted. Look what he said in verse 29. And he that sent me is with me. Well, if Jesus sent me to preach, I got him in me. How can you call on Jesus in whom you've not heard? And how can you believe on somebody you hadn't been taught about? And how can they hear without a preacher? And how can the preacher preach unless he be sent? We're all preachers, but he's talking about the gift of a pastor. Then he says, and he that sent me is with me. The father hath not left me alone for I do always those things that what? Without faith, you can't please. You must believe that he is. And now people don't have no problem in believing that Jesus is. It's the part about the rewarding. Because the rewards don't drop. You don't earn them. You just yield to his ministry. We're not talking about working to earn anything. You just yield to what he gives you to do. We're talking about you lifting up his name. And he'll reward you for that. For serving him, cleaving to him, loving him. As he spake these words, as he spake these words, faith was imparted to these people. In speaking these words, faith was imparted to them people. And what it says next? Many believed on him. How? Looking forward to the cross. He talking about his death. What is he ministering on? His death, burial, and his resurrection? That's what he ministering on. And as he was speaking these words, many people believed him as they looked forward to the cross. He hadn't even died. That's the reason why it's important. What is the Holy Spirit saying to you about what I'm saying? That's what's important to you. Then Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him. See, I pointed on how they believed on what he was speaking the word. And faith was imparted to him. Some people rejected. Some people believed it. Now, he done separated the people. Now, he's speaking to the one that believed on him. What did he tell them? He said, if you continue in my word, then, see, there's always a doing something and then a then. You do it Monday and you don't do it no more till Friday. You'll never see a then, if I can put it like that. You'll never see a then. It has to be constant. You should operate in faith every moment. Every moment. It's a way of living. It's a life. It's a habit of life. You believe in the Lord. Your heart is being purified. It's being cleansed and a lot of other things taking place. Righteousness being put on your account. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my word, then are you mine. You my disciples indeed. First thing. And you shall know, you shall have the knowledge, you shall know the truth. It is his desire that all men be saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. That's more important to him than anything else because it's with your inner character. You deal with your inside. All of us look different. He ain't thinking about that. He's thinking about how much of him is in you. So then he says, continue his word. Then are you my disciples and you shall know, know the truth. What's in truth? There you go, Jesus. Where is grace found? Grace is found in truth. Grace is found in truth according to Colossians 1 and 6. Talking about the word of the truth of the gospel, which is come unto you as it is in all the world. See, the gospel doesn't come to all the world. The world just don't want it. Then it says, and the gospel bring forth fruit as it do it also in you since the day you heard, heard of it and knew the grace, what? Of God in truth. Knew the grace of God in truth. Talking about Jesus, because grace and truth came by Jesus. God got everything worked out to you. He just wants your eyes to be open to This whole book is a book of revelation. Has it been revealed? What's been revealed to you? That's what he expects you to operate in. Righteousness must be revealed. So does faith. It's been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. It's been given to you. But you have to seek and find. All right. I just want you to see what grace is. The grace of God is in truth. And you shall know the truth. You can't get away from grace. It takes grace to be glorified. The glory of his grace over there in Ephesians. Take grace to be saved. Take grace to give. 
I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness came by the law, then Christ died in vain because righteousness came by faith. So you can frustrate the grace of God. Yeah, God bestowed grace on me, but it ain't just me. It's grace on what? Working with me. Grace teaches me to be so. Grace is my partner, baby. <laughs> when I pray for the service, I don't pray for the service per se. I pray for the grace of God to be here for y'all to receive. Let's come back over here and finish this out on John 8. He said, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. The truth acted upon. It says the truth liberates and it exempts. The truth recreates you from inside. The truth is what causes you to be liberated and exempted. Not just the truth out here. You know, I, oh, girl, the truth go liberate. No, it ain't. I ain't going to do nothing to you. It got to be inside of you in order to do this. Oh, I'm free. I'm not locked up. Huh? What is manifested in you that's causing you to be free and not locked up? You have to have the truth in manifestation. If you don't, you're locked up. And people can lock you up. You can want to be locked up, but you better not be locked up from Jesus. They answered him, we be Abraham's seed. <laughs> We were never in bondage to any man. And you under the Roman. <laughs> See, people got all kind of ways to justify themselves. I ain't locked up. What's she talking about? Yeah, you're locked up. If you say, Lord, I'm locked up. Unlock the door. Teach me how to unlock. If you want to admit you locked up, you will stay locked up. Well, I don't believe up. See that? You don't believe you locked up. Everybody got a little ounce of lock them up. You lay down a law for yourself. What you not going to do? When I get up in the morning... Now, I ain't talking about reading, praying, and studying. I'm talking about this other stuff. Like, I'm not going to eat no more sugar. What did I just do? I lock who up? I lock myself up. Every time I eat sugar, this happens. I'm tightening the screw. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Then along comes a key. Why are you doing that? The key comes to unlock me. Why are you doing that? You're messing your own self up. I can eat anything at any time, and it doesn't bother me. I repent. <laughs> Unlock, Lord, destroy every lock. See, I see a prey and buying the sugar and all that. That's fine and good. But I'm just saying, that's how you can lock your own. Oh, I don't watch that. Oh, I don't do this. Oh, no. and I ain't hear nothing in this Bible that said don't do this. You're building up your own locks. You're coming out of your own bias and prejudice with what you don't do, not with what Jesus. I don't go that place. I don't do that and take pride in it. Nah, that means everybody's got a little lock up in them. All right. They answer him, we be Abraham's seed, and we were never in bondage to any man. How say you, you shall be made free. Jesus answered them, verily, verily, I say unto you, go tell you what locks you up. Whosoever committed sin. See that S-I-N? That's the sin nature. That's not the act. Nobody in here has a sin nature. Well, you got the sin nature. The sin nature is never destroyed. It's still there. It's just there. It'll leave when you get your glorified body. But you can say no to sin. Is the servant a sin? Whatever you commit yourself to, if you commit sin, you place yourself under sin's authority. We ain't talking about big stuff now because we don't do big stuff that people see. We talking about these little bit of things. Murmuring, complaining. That's a sin. Or having a troubled heart. That's a sin. So what you've done, you put yourself under the jurisdiction of it. Notice what he said. The servant, the servant of what? Of sin. I never saw that till the other day. The servant of sin, the servant of sin is supposed to be what? Cast out. You don't obey it. That's why he said the servant abided not in the house forever. Well, who house are we? We God's house. So when sin comes your way, you have to spiritually discern it. You hear what I'm saying? You got to spiritually discern it. Because it's camouflaged and you can't see it with your natural eyes, but the sun. So you're dealing with the flesh, the servant of sin, and the sun abided forever. You're dealing with the law, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Remember what they said over there in Galatians about cast out the bonds woman with her son because the free woman being Jerusalem is the sun forever. 36, if the sun therefore shall make you Make you, make you, recreate you free. You free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's seed. See, you can be, Abraham's seed came into, you had the, the, the seed of the promise and you had the seed of the flesh. They still was Abraham's children. 
God created mankind, but then they got some people that belong to the Lord because you're a human race. You have authority in this earth realm and some people that are saved and don't really belong to him. They say they go to heaven, but they ain't the Lord's. I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me because what? Here it is. My word has no place in you. The word of God has to have a place in you. Either the law, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus will have a place in you or your flesh. Whatever you commit to is who you place yourself under the authority of. If it's not of faith, what is it? Sin. <laughs> and the servant of sin abided not in the house forever. That's how important faith is. If it's not of faith, if you don't eat by faith, if you don't dress, whatever, that's Jesus, still Jesus, and it, Jesus, Jesus, it's sin. Oh, I don't believe that. Fine. You grow. You got a choice whether to believe it or not. But you want your life so well-tuned. See, this be practicing. This is practice time. Amen.